Hey everybody, I am Dane Sanders and I want to, I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. Uh, this, uh, I don't even know what episode this is. We've been doing this for a long time and uh, it's uh, meant to be a conversation, truly a conversation between me and my guests and also you guys who are listening in. And if you're uh, unfamiliar with the show, it, it's pretty quick. It goes for about 30, 45 minutes max um, and the intention is for us to be candid in our dialogue and really en engage as much as we can. But because this is a pre-recorded conversation, we're then going to, uh, when we broadcast it live for the first time, uh, both myself and my guests hopefully are gonna be in the chat room and engaging with you live, and of course on Twitter and that sort of thing. So it should be highly interactive, uh, and it's a little less of a juggling act for me to be broadcasting it, um, chatting with you online, and it, it just kinda, I get to be focused on one thing at a time. So uh, we've also removed a lot of the technological glitches by going with this format and open up a lot of possibility with getting on some great guests, and today is no exception. Um, uh, the format, again, is, is pretty quick, and my hope is that you'll, you'll engage it um, both online and, and in the chat room. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to my guest. Her name is Lindsay Adler, and you see her uh, here next to me on the screen. And uh, Lindsay, uh, if you don't know who she is, she'll explain a little bit in a second, but uh, she's a remarkable photographer. And in fact, I'd encourage you to go check her out. It's L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-A-D-L-E-R.com. And of course, or Lindsay Adler Photography, is that right? Dot com? Yep. Okay, great. And, uh, and of course, and her blog, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, first of all, welcome, Lindsay. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to talk to you. Well, I, I, it's funny. For those of you guys who don't know, these conversations, oftentimes when I have my guests on the show, it is the first time we get a chance to meet, or, and, and, or we have met kind of online or, or some other mechanism through Twitter or whatever, and uh, it's always a thrill for me. I always get a little nervous before I get a chance to meet these people, and, and they're extraordinary, uh, what they've done and how they've done it. Um, so why don't you share a little bit, uh, Lindsay, a little bit about how you got to where you're at and, and where you're, what you do in the photo industry. Sure, absolutely. Um, I am a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York City. Okay. I've only been here about a year and a half, um, so it's all still new and exciting and wonderful for me. Where in the city do you live? I live on the Upper West Side. I live right on Central Park, um, nice. which is great because I have a studio if I need to shoot studio. And then if I need to pretend I'm away from the city, we just pop out to the park and it's wonderful. So. I was just there a few weeks ago. I, I shot a family in the Upper East Side, but I think the Upper West Side is probably my favorite part of the whole city. It's, I mean, well, it's not true. I love the village and there's a lot of parts I like. It's, it's peaceful and a lot of good food, which is wonderful. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> Definitely. right. Definitely. Um, so just to give you a little background, um, I started in fashion photography only about three years ago. So specifically in this genre or this type of photography um, for a short time. Hmm. I first discovered photography when I was about 13 and it was something that my mom did and my grandmother did and so it was kind of like you know a girls day out and we would go out and shoot on the farm, shoot in the woods and it was kind of a bonding experience in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, but because the type of personality I have um, I instantly said you know what I love this. This is hmm. fantastic. I want to make it my career. I don't want it to be something where I have to work a nine to five in order to do what I love. I want to do what I love. Um, well, I do what I love like 18 hours a day at this point. <laughs> but um, so I started off with nature photography and then I tried some photojournalism and then I tried some portraiture. Mm. Um, and I just loved everything, but nothing quite fit my personality. And I felt kind of creative re creatively restrained uh, mm. more or less in the different types of photography. And then I tried fashion photography. and. As I'm sure you and everybody else has seen, if you look at many fashion magazines, there are no rules. It's whatever you want to do. If you envision something beautiful, you can create it and share it with others. Mm. So um, I've been doing fashion photography here in New York for a year and a half, um, total about three years, but photography for you know a good portion of my life. Mm. Well, it's a couple things about what you're saying that's really fun. One is you started when you were 13. I started when I was 31. So. Uh, I'm already kind of bowing. This is great. Uh, and second, uh, one of the things I love about having you on the show, Lindsay, is uh, you were here by request. Uh, there's folks who watch this uh, show pretty regularly, and uh, we've been doing it for a while now. Um, but oftentimes people will say, oh, man, I just wish I could get to know or hear Lindsay, or you know, in this case it was Lindsay, and, and, or other guests. So um, this was a direct request that led to someone reaching out and us making a connection, and uh, so glad you're here. And it's, it speaks volumes to both your person and your work um, and the combination of the two 
And I was especially struck as you just were just sharing how much um, those connect. Like even as you were searching for a genre that fit for you, um, that you were actually considering, gosh, my personality relative to uh, the craft. Right. Uh, so talk a little bit more about finding that fit. Because I, I know that there's a lot of folks who are listening who really struggle with you know, trying to look for opportunity where they think they can make money at the gig, but also trying to stay in integrity with themselves. So talk a little bit about that. Sure, and that is a constant balance that I think photographers are all, especially trying to start their business, are always struggling with. Um, for me, it was more of, you know, I, when I was getting into photography, I was in my teens, so I still didn't really know who I was. Hmm. And so I grew along with my photography. Hmm. And at first, you know, I was, I loved nature and I just loved you know, going out someplace and seeing something amazing that you can't even believe exists on Earth. And that was really exciting. Until I realized I'm not the type of person to wake up before sunrise, <laughs> hike out five miles, and then hope that there's a sunrise. Right. Um, I'm not that patient. Um, so, I mean, it was just trying a lot of different things. But to this day, um, I promote myself as a fashion photographer. You know, that's, that's what I do. But... I do plenty of other work that people wouldn't think fits under the fashion photography realm. Mm. Um, I do a lot of portraits of professional athletes. Um, periodically, I'll shoot campaigns that are more commercial that have you know nothing to do with fashion photography. And in fact, um, that's how real you know pretty much all the big name fashion photographers make their money. It's the commercial work. It's not the pretty fashion with women in beautiful clothing that pays a lot of the money. Mm. Um, so the whole time that you're trying to make a living. Um, you know, a lot of times what I was doing is I, I figured out what I wanted my niche to be. I figured out what I wanted my specialty to be. But while trying to build that up, I do what I needed to do on the side mm -hmm. to support myself. Because um, if you can't pay the bills and you can't make it your career. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, for me, it's being able to market myself in a specific way, but have multiple revenue streams so that it, it keeps me going. And, yeah. you know, what, even being where I am, I still have a whole bunch of different revenue streams um, for my photography. Mm -hmm. you know, that makes a ton of sense to me. And I, even that distinction between, you know, every human is multifaceted and the internet is, if that's one kind of vein that people find out about you, is pretty single dimensional. Um, mm -hmm. and, and from a branding perspective, that makes a lot of sense to me too, because I know when I'm trying to sort through companies that I like or individuals that are branded in certain ways, uh, it's just easier for me to kind of chunk them into a box and go, okay, well, you know, what are they to me? Um, so from a client's perspective, that makes a lot of sense to me, but I also get too that you've, you've kind of retained by putting a strong singular focus brand out there, you've created enough freedom for you to do really whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. but, but whatever you want to do doesn't necessarily make it into your body of work online. Is that fair uh -oh. to say? Yeah. I mean, even at this point, I would say, if you look at my work online, um, Okay, so this is if for people that aren't fashion in fashion photography. It's very interesting how it works because when I shoot for magazines, mm -hmm. um, some of it's paid and some of it's not paid. Um, more of it's not paid. Hmm. And so basically, how it works is if I shoot for a fashion magazine and I'm asked to create a fashion editorial, so it's going to be a series of six or twelve images that are laid out as a story, have my name on it. It's my vision. It's whatever I want to do. Those pay very very little or nothing at all because mm. it's it's treated as a way for me to advertise myself in these publications right. so ideally an advertiser comes across that says we love her vision we love her talent we want to hire her um, so that pays almost nothing whereas maybe a portrait um, if I'm shooting for you know bullet magazine and they are featuring this new up-and-coming singer they may hire me to do a portrait of that individual or the piece and so on and so forth right um, so if you look at my my portfolio, technically, most of what's on there is not paid work at all. Most of it, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, over 60% of it. But it was published work and it was technically for a client. So it's that weird area of, you know, it is personal work, but it was going someplace. Sure. Um, and, you know, that's a piece of advice that I, I'd like to give people. Um, I guarantee you, if you're just starting off, I don't even mean beginner photography, but taking it seriously as a career, if all your portfolio is only client work, your portfolio is not as good as it could be. Right. Um, and it is not cheating. If you're a wedding photographer and you dress up a gorgeous couple as a bride and groom, 
and go to a beautiful location and shoot that, that is not cheating to me because given the right circumstances, you could create that image mm -hmm. if you had a bride and groom that looked like that, if they gave you the time to go to that location mm -hmm. and like the image the way you wanted it to. So um, I encourage people to shoot things that aren't necessarily paid work because you're showing people what your abilities are. And then if they like that, you can provide that for them yeah. instead of whatever's typical. You know, it's interesting. I, I love what you're saying, uh, and it certainly resonates with, resonates with my own kind of philosophy. Uh, but, you know, that would ruffle a lot of feathers. There's a lot of folks out there in the kind of the, I, I would say, a little bit more rigid in their journalistic stance and they're kind of bringing in some kind of uh, right or wrong consideration. And they'll say, well, gosh, if it's fabricated, then it's not authentic. And and that, that just seems pretty... Uh, in, in one particular genre of journal, journalism, I could see that. Um, but when it comes to what we create, uh, I, I don't know. I'm with you. I, I just, I, I, I'm always confused by this idea of like, oh gosh, if it's not entirely live and unaltered, then it's not real. Yet those are the images that are often moving for people. And really, how a big chunk of our industry is it works. Um, but what do you, what do you say to the folks that are just like, oh gosh, that's just not not appropriate or or well, you're faking yeah. it or whatever I mean, if i if i were um a photojournalist then i would not set things up i did actually technically my education um i had a degree in business political science and photography but most of what i did in the photography was me playing around with photojournalism hmm. so in that realm yeah there are plenty of rules and regulations but for fashion photographers portrait photographers wedding photographers um that image that I created, if I had an attractive bride and groom approach me and they wanted to put enough into that photography to go to that beautiful location, I could produce it. So I'm basically creating an advertisement for myself saying, if you give me the resources I require, I can produce this for you. Right. So it's, it's really just a way for me to show my skills. And most people aren't visual. Um, even people that come to me for, that are clients that say, you know, we love your work. Even then, they're not photographers. They don't necessarily know what they love about my work. So when I create these idealized scenes, I can sit down with them and break apart, you know, what is it that attracts you about these perfect images? Yeah. Let's work towards that. Um, and for my shoots, just the type of photography I do, we don't show up and take a picture. There's a lot of process into what I do. We're mm -hmm. talking about the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, the location, the lighting, props, styling. And so... We really need to actually sit down, you know, with my client to figure out what visuals they want, mm. so that we can create that. I create visuals. I don't take pictures. Mm. Well, let's let's talk about that a little bit, because I, 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 you know, and as we're getting to know each other before we went on on the show today, we we're talking a little bit about the end output, and especially mm -hmm. given our day and age, all the the you know output. Uh, isn't just eight by ten headshots anymore. <laughs> there's right. there's there's a lot that goes into um, uh, the zeros and ones of our output, and um, I know that you are passionate about innovative ways to uh, to have your work captured and, and and experienced by by your clients and and beyond. So talk a little bit about um, about that part of your world and what you see as the future of of uh, sharing photography definitely well to be honest since I moved to New York City um, I provided almost no prints whatsoever to clients because that's not what they they want and what they need here hmm. um, I had a portrait um, and wedding business in upstate New York and yes I was selling a lot more prints and albums and things like that but nowadays when people come to me they don't want that 8 by 10 print that's not what I'm hired to do right. um, so what's really really interesting is okay yes things end up in magazines um, and yes, they end up on billboards and you have, you know, all those different venues. Um, but nowadays, people don't hire me because I can click a camera. They hire me because I can express an idea. Hmm. Um, and so in my ability to express an idea, that doesn't necessarily mean it's purely just clicking a photograph. Hmm. Um, so a lot of times now, like I've been hired to direct music videos. Um, I've hmm. created fashion films for I'm, brands. I'm just so you know, so, I'm taking notes. That was a good quote. And I'm going to give okay. you. I'm going to give you credit on Twitter, but I'm going to write it down. Just like. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, so if you look at something like um, I had a jewelry company hire me to shoot their lookbook, and a lookbook is basically um, a collection of okay, they created this season, you know, these different pieces of jewelry, 
and I'm asked to photograph and they put it online and they use it to promote their brand. But then they also have me do a short 30, 45 second piece shot on video that they can use on their website or to promote themselves or um, put on banner ads. Um, so I'll be asked to do things like that. I have the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe there. They just need something short. Um, for magazines that have a strong online presence or maybe even only are online, um, instead of having just still image uh, fashion editorials, I have directed several fashion films. And a fashion film is basically take that fashion editorial, make it into a narrative, or just make it into something that spans time. It has movement. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it has a narrative. It doesn't always, but it's it's beautiful, and it makes use of the medium you're using. You're mm -hmm. using online. You can. It doesn't have to be you know two dimensional. I can have video. Um, I can have it even be interactive. So kind of on that realm. Um, something I've been playing with, and in the new year, um, in 2012, mm -hmm. I'll be releasing a website with something, uh, with a portfolio of something called Cinemagraphs, mm -hmm. and they're basically moving images. And um, what I like to tell people who've never seen one is, if you think of in the Harry Potter movies, they have the moving images on the newspapers, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and they have the people yelling and moving, or whatever. It's like that. Um, it's taking a still frame or a clip. Um, and taking that image and just adding another dimension, some kind of movement, some kind of engagement. And the reason that I think this is important is that every single client that I show this, their brains start turning and they start thinking about the ideas because a lot of these clients, okay, they, don't, they aren't on the billboards, but they are on, on, they do have an online presence. They have a website, they advertise an online magazine, they have an iPad app, or they're in iPad magazine. So, so many people are just thinking, you know what, we have this technology, why stick to a still frame? Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I'm, I'm first and foremost, I mean, I am a photographer, but I am an image maker. So if somebody wants me to create a moving image, I can create a moving image. Um, if somebody wants me to create a fashion film, I can do that. And I will also tell people who are listening to this thinking, okay, holy crap, you know, what's all this extra stuff? Um, I outsource when I need to outsource like for me if when I didn't know how to operate a certain video camera um, in the beginning I worked with somebody who did you know I brought somebody on the team to work with me um, for this animation I can do a little bit of animation but if I need something more elaborate I bring on an animator right. um, it's the people hire me for my vision and for the way I express an idea but it's fine if I outsource to other people to help me bring that vision together. Well, it's funny you said, I mean, even the, the, the term of outsourcing, it, it almost sounds like, like it's one thing to outsource my accounting or outsource even my post-production, but mm -hmm. to bring on a tech that can cover um, animation, that, that just seems appropriate. That just sounds like if any commercial shoot has individuals, like I've been, I had a conversation once with uh, Nick Onkin about this and he was talking about vision and huge huge I'm a huge fan of his I love what he comes up with but he's first in line to say yeah some of my techs are actually technically way better than I am at a particular lighting or you know they have specialists who are really good at you know water be beads of water on black people uh, you know and just this hyper hyper focus and specialty and of course he wants to bring those people on for that particular gig when he has a hip-hop artist doing some aerial whatever you know what I mean like he, he wants to have that result but he had the vision and it was the right. vision that was the real value that is why he got hired to get the gig. Absolutely. And, and you know, to be honest, that's why a lot of times, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll see some photographers that they get some big gigs and they're kind of mediocre, but they pull it off because guess what? It was about the idea that they had. And you know what? I don't do the hair for my model. And shoot. <laughs> I have hairstylists do that because that's what they do. their specialty. I right. don't do hair. I don't do makeup. So for me, I have the specialists that do that and I reach out to other people. Like When I do fashion films, I know how to edit. Um, in college, I took several video classes. It was something I was interested in. But I don't do that. I outsource mm -hmm. because, again, I need to spend my time more getting more clients um, and working on sharing my ideas than editing a video that's going to take me forever. Mm -hmm. um, so I try... Not gonna lie. like I try the best that I can to make good use of my time. It doesn't always happen, but um, you know, figure out what's the best use of, of what my, my talents are, and it's definitely not you know editing or doing hair. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, uh, 
Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the transition you've gone through. Because you mentioned already that you had a wedding portrait business, you made the jump, you moved to the big city. You know, it's all very exciting. And for a lot of folks, that's the dream, right? Is is uh, having some kind of success, especially in, a, in an environment like New York or, or some other major city. Um, given that transition, what did you learn in the wedding and portrait world that's now serving you in a way that maybe your counterparts in fashion photography maybe might not have might might actually have a deficit because they didn't go through the drill with that stuff is there anything that you learned in those days that is informing what you do now uh, there's there's so many things and it's actually interesting you say that way but it, it kind of both being in both industries feeds back beneficially to one another kind of a so cross pollinating let's go, the, let's go from the fashion to the wedding like we'll go that sure. way first sure um, when I was doing portrait and wedding photography, I was also doing my fashion photography on the side because I wasn't ready when I was doing that portrait and wedding business to jump to New York yet. It's a big move and there are a lot of considerations if you actually want to succeed. Um, but as I was doing the portrait and wedding business, um, I realized, you know, fundamentally that there's no reason they had to be different. Like mm -hmm. why can't I take a portrait shoot and dress somebody up and make it a fantasy for that client. They don't need to look like a typical model, but I can make them feel like one. Hmm. Um, and I can create an experience for them instead of just a print. Hmm. And you know, if you listen to a lot of successful photographers, yes, of course the image is important, but the experience is also very important. Somebody hires you for your personality. Hmm. Um, in the wedding and portrait world, um, again, um, if you listen to a lot of photographers, what they'll tell you is that Okay, yes, you, we need to have a base level of talent, mm -hmm. obviously. You need to make a good image. But beyond that, the photographers that really succeed aren't necessarily the ones that are phenomenal. They're the ones that know how to market themselves. They're the ones that know how to relate to other people, to meet the needs of their clients. Mm -hmm. So in my experiences as a portrait and wedding photographer, I realized ways that I can connect with my clients, ways that I can market to them, mm -hmm. ways that I can understand their needs, what they're looking for, especially if they're not visual people. Um, and so it just really the ways that I learned to interact with people, I took into the realm that I'm in now and it just made me feel more comfortable because on that day when the big client comes and there's a ton of money at stake, it can be nerve wracking. But you know what? I photographed weddings where thousands and thousands of dollars were at stake. It's that same kind of stress level, just a different realm. Yeah, it's relocated. Um, hey, can I ask a favor, Lindsay? Um, for, yeah. I think your your video froze just for a I second. I see this. It looks and like I, I'm missing the screen. I, but I th yeah, it's like well, it's a good look. I've had some pretty awkward looks when it freezes <laughs> on me. So uh, if you don't, if you don't mind, if you it, just don't don't hang up. But there's two buttons. Oh, there you go. Yep. And then okay, turn the video on. back on, and hopefully, it'll click in. Oh, I don't know about that. It's glowing. It's trying. Okay. It's a great headshot, by the way. And I can see this. It's very interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I hit the button way too many times. Okay, what's it doing? Uh, it, it started glowing. It started not. I'm not really sure. Um, I really don't want to hang up the call, though, so let's keep going. I, I One option is, I, I think if you go up to the file menu. Sure. And you click preferences. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Uh, sorry, Skype menu, and then hit preferences. Yep. Uh, and then uh, way over on the right, there's the audio video tab. If you click yep. on the, if you click on that, mm -hmm. see if. Uh, Let's see this. Even if you reselect your camera. Yeah, there's only one camera, so it won't unselect. Let me let me okay. Let's turn off the little. Let's just... Oh dear. Okay, how about? If I minimize it. What I love is every time you talk, your your headshot glows. It goes wrong, wrong. So I, have to, I have to show you this video um, that like that I was featured in recently, where they had me with a lightsaber, and I was uh, I, I was killing videographers. <laughs> That's for reals. You're killing videographers. Yes. That is hilarious. So I have this uh, <laughs> screenplay I've been writing for about you know half a decade called Pictures and Promises, which is a is it's a a sitcom. Um, where the, the wedding photographer is the protagonist and the antagonist is a videographer and, uh, yeah. and, and the love interest is a wedding coordinator and uh, there's, that's where all the tension is and uh, I thought it'd be hilarious but you, you've already beat me to the punch and killed him with a lightsaber. Good for you. Well, you'll, I'll, I'll show you. I will show you. 
And I don't think I'm going to get this to restart. All right. Well, if you guys are okay at home, we'll continue with the audio. And I, I am bummed because they're going to be bummed to miss you. But they can always rewind the replay and, and check you out later. But That's cool. Um, and, and, and given, you know... Uh, now you can walk around in your pajamas and it'd be no big deal. Like really. Yep. Yep. I, I tell people all the time, like I have Skype conversations all the time where I'll have like a suit jacket on up top and then I have like swim shorts on the bottom, you know? It's like Anchorman. That's great. That's exactly. Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, here's my last question before we're done. And it really has to do with, with uh, the folks who are listening in and, and, you know, whether they are kind of on the rise or thriving or they're in a good season and they're staring at January and they're terrified, mm -hmm. whether they're in startup mode or restart mode, given what you know now, if you were starting out and you had three months to kind of get, get things in order, and in particular, let's go backwards uh, rather than the fashion world. Oh, you know, actually, I, I take it back. Uh, maybe fashion is probably the better way to go. Um, if you had you had three months to get get in order, you know everything you know that you know now, but you don't have the resources, you don't have the connections, you don't have the book deal, you're not on Scott Kelby. Like, what, what is it that you do first? How do you spend your time? Yeah, I mean, the first thing, that, I mean, it's very hard to put them in order of what you need to do. You have a few things you have to do up front. Yeah. Um, but I'll take it one direction first. Um, when I moved to New York, one of the essential pieces was that I had this stylist that I work with, mm -hmm. um, and she helped get me work because she was styling celebrities and when that celebrity needed a portrait she called me. Hmm. So what I think I would say kind of I, I took out of that is that you need to know people but that doesn't need to mean like oh I have a rich uncle and he knows people. Uh, you need to just put yourself out there. Hmm. Figure out who are the people that you want to be working with and approach them because the worst thing that can happen is that you get rejected. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of times these people, if you even just in the email or in the phone call, just kind of put in there wanting a little bit of advice, how to get to the point to work with those people or, you know, what they would recommend. You know, if it's quick and easy, most people will give you a quick little reply on, on a piece of advice. Sure. So for me, I mean, you have to get yourself out there in front of as many people because otherwise you can't build the creative team. You can't get those people that are going to recommend you to jobs. Um, the other thing the kind of two-pronged thing is um, you need to figure out what your key message is. So in a sentence, what would I want people to come away with about Lindsay Adler photography? You know, if somebody were trying to describe, you know, what's her brand or what's different about her, is there anything and, and what would that be? Because when I know that, that informs all my other marketing, all my other networking, because I know the key points I need to communicate. So that's what I do in my social networking, that's what I do in my um, postcards to you know clients that's what I do in any of my marketing mm -hmm. um, so for me most of my success I mean okay it took me a heck of a lot longer than three months because although yes I've only been doing it for three years I mean I've been doing photo and, and marketing more or less you know the entire time so for me it was like okay you know what who are the photographers that I want to be like and who are successful all right who do they know or how might I get there? Who do I need to know to get to that point? How can I market to them? When I define that target audience, how can I get their attention? Hmm. Um, it's one of the things that I focus on is um, my social media is important to my success. Um, I definitely got, even if not plenty of clients directly from social media, um, people will say, I've seen you on, or I was introduced to your work through, or when I searched your name, I found. Um, so it's all that content. So for me, it's keeping in mind that when somebody Googles me, what what comes up? Um, is there a strong reputation there so that if this person is considering hiring Lindsay Adler, right. do they feel confident? Is there a lot out there that says, okay, she shot this, she's worked with this individual? Um, when people go to my blog, is it just me talking about myself? Or can they see behind the scenes of, you know what, if they hired me, what would it be like on a Lindsay Adler set? What would it be like to work with her? Um, you know. Is she an expert? Looking at my blog, do you see behind the scenes? Is she talking as an expert in the industry? Mm. And these are all things that I was considering, even when I wasn't the expert, um, putting that vision out there so that if a, if a client comes and looks at my site, they feel confident. Mm. And that's you know one thing that I'm sure you know as well. Um, confidence is worth so much more than talent in so many situations because you know a lot of these people they're not 
necessarily visual individuals. Right. And so if there's two photographers that are even close in talent, they can't discern. Whatever one is more confident, whatever one says, oh, I'm going to do an amazing campaign for you. You hired me, and this is, this is going to be the best campaign you've ever had. We will work together to make magic. You know, the people that are so confident, those are the people that get hired. That's fantastic. You know, it, it's funny. I, I think uh, if I could put confidence in a bottle and sell it, I'd make some dough. Uh, it's, it's amazing how how powerful that idea is and in particular the idea of being confident in my own skin so it's not yeah. that I have to be more confident like what a good friend of mine is a guy named Jerry Keown I think you met Jerry yeah. uh, and I love him I mean he's a remarkable photographer uh, he's actually very much in kind of the vein of fashion uh, who happens to shoot weddings yeah. and um, I, I don't know if I've met a more confident guy the guy's ridiculous he just kind of <laughs> I, and he'll say it straight up like well that's what narcissists do we're confident you know and and he loves it he's a great guy um, and I don't have to be more confident than Jerry to be confident in my own skin. And that's the part where I, for anybody who's listening to this, I just think getting, getting at peace with who you are and asserting <laughs> that is what I'm hearing you say is confidence. Because it doesn't have to be I have to mimic someone else. It's how can I do that in, with an integrous way to me. And right. I, I, I totally agree with you because it's about... You know, also knowing that you're doing the best job that you can and that you want to make your clients happy. Like conveying to them that, you know what, we're working for a common goal. We That's both right. want the same thing. And I will tell you, um, three years ago, I was terrified of making cold, cold calls. I used to ask my mom to pretend to be me and do cold calls for me <laughs> uh, because I was so unconfident and so scared. Uh -huh. um, but you know what? Practice makes perfect. And well, that's, you know, what I want people to know. Just it's, well, it's funny. We just, we, fake it. <laughs> I just, we, it, well, it, is, it isn't even, it's, again, like, I, it's not a, I, cold calls are only scary if I'm pretending. If I'm just being me, cold calls <laughs> yeah. aren't scary at all. I, I make cold calls all the time. Every time I call a company, every time I call yep. a friend, I mean, or, I mean, not a friend, a friend of a friend, or, I mean, even our conversation to, to have you on the show with somebody making a cold call to me and saying, do you know Lindsay Adler? Can you have her on the show? I'm like, I don't know her. So I guess I have to make a phone cold call. And actually, I got scared and I said, well, you make a cold call on my behalf. And she did. And, yeah, and, she and did. you know, and then all of a sudden we're in a conversation, but there's, there's, there is a kind of a, an at easiness with it that uh, is available to anybody. And if you're at home listening to this and you're like, yeah, I don't experience that, practice, practice mm -hmm. it. Give yourself that gift. Hey, um, thank you so much for being on the show, Lindsay. Just what a treat to have you on and get to know you a little bit. I hope we can have you on again. And I know you have some big things coming in 2012. Can you share really quickly what those things are and how we can tune in? Sure, um, well, I teach all over the place. So I mean, pretty much any of the big conferences you'll see me at, Imaging. I'll be at WPPI. I'll be at Photo Plus in New York. So we should, we should get coffee at WPPI because I'll be there too. Definitely. Okay. I, it'll, it'll be a busy schedule, and you know how Vegas is with no sleep. But I sure do. We'll be good. Um, and um, I have two books. Um, one's on new media and social networking for photographers. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. is Fashion Flair for Portrait and Wedding Photography. So how I took my techniques from fashion applied it to portrait and weddings. Um, I have another book I'm working on, but that won't be out to the end of the year. I have a bridal posing guide, um, iPad and iPhone app coming cool. out in the very beginning of the year, and a DVD on creative studio lighting. So as you can imagine, I don't necessarily sleep much, but I love what I do, so it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. That's the beautiful thing about working around things you love. That's great. Absolutely. Well, again, so if you're at home and you want to check uh, Lindsay and her work out, uh, go to Lindsay with an A Y Adler photography.com or her blog blog dot Lindsay Adler photography and are you I'm assuming you're on Twitter at Lindsay Adler yep that's me and I'm on Facebook I'm, I'm all over the place and you know what if people you know if people have a question and they send me a quick you know quick Facebook message a quick tweet you know that's easy for me to get back to but thank you so much for having me on it was really nice and easy to chat with you so I appreciate it <laughs> my pleasure and thank you and I look forward to meeting in person see you all right thank you bye